Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Hope everybody hears me. Uh, so, okay. so let's start our discussion, our presentation on uh, safety and machine critical applications with Greenhill software. Today I'm going to show uh, how Greenhill software uh, helps you with uh, safety and mission critical application. So I forgot to um, introduce myself. I'm Srijit. I work uh, working uh, in Trident Infosol. I'm taking care of Greenhouse software tools. Uh, tools. Okay. So this is the agenda for our discussion or presentation today. So uh, we'll be uh, discussing on critical systems, the challenges faced on critical systems, then uh, the introduction to Greenhill software and their tools, the products, and later on we will be having a small uh, customer success stories with Greenhill. So uh, starting, what are critical systems? Critical systems, what we see uh, in our day-to-day -day lives are those systems which when failed can cause a uh, loss to life, uh, an injury, or maybe uh, financial losses, maybe a complete uh, loss to your business, like that. So these are the critical systems. So these are classifications of critical systems. We have one is safety critical systems and mission critical systems. So there are some other critical systems like business critical and infrastructure critical, which I believe which, uh, comes under mission critical systems because they all uh, are critical systems which uh, when failed can cause a, a loss towards business. So let's you know, let's see what is safety critical systems. So a system when failed can cause a loss to a life or a significant property damage or damage to the environment. So the examples has medical devices, which when fail, when then definitely harm a, a person who's using it or, use, or being monitored on with the medical devices. Then aircraft flight control, we have already seen a lot of um, crashes happen in the real life with which many people lost their life. Then weapons, those weapons are intended uh, to kill, but the problem is uh, it is also intended for defense. So if by itself, if it is failing, then it can cause a major damage. Then nuclear system, uh, we have already seen in history what an impact a nuclear system can cause to the environment. Mm -hmm. So there is some linkage between secure and safety, security and safety. So the thing is, a safe need, safe system needs to be secure. And a security is something with, uh, with something like it should not be. A, it's an inside out system. That means it should not, uh, uh, it should not, not be able to hack. It should not be. Uh, it should protect the data inside. Like you no know, illegal access. Okay, it should not damage its uh, hardware. So this is security. So a system, a safe system needs to be secured at first. Okay, so then only system can be safe. So, but what happens as a secure system need not to be safe. That means all, it depends on the application, depends on. So a secure system may not be uh, uh, deployed on a place where uh, safety is a major concern. So it depends on the application. Now comes to mission critical systems. So what are mission critical systems? So when a mission critical system fails, it may result in the damage of your business, your organization, or maybe uh, your business opportunities, your financial, uh, it may cause a financial loss, or it may, what happened, you might have a goal and it may, uh, it may avoid you from reaching that, or it may inter, interrupt you from reaching that particular goal. So that's what happens in a mission critical system. So an example is a navigation system in an aircraft or an online banking system. So what are the basic characteristics of a 
uh, critical systems. So for a critical system, it should be safe. It should be reliable. That means safety I already defined. So reliable means the software should be reliable. Software return should be reliable. Hardware should be reliable. And availability, that means it should be always available for you. And uh, recovery, that means if it is, uh, if it is, uh, if a fault is, if a fault is happening, or if a fault has happened, it should be able to recover, and it should be secure by itself. That means no uh, outside world intrusions can cause a damage to the system. So how can we ensure this safety and security to 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 the mission safety and mission critical systems? To have a process. That means you should have a requirement management where you will study the requirement completely and you can use your static analysis tools while developing which which you can uh, reduce the uh, testing uh, testing um, and you have a traceability uh, you should have a traceability that means you should know what is the starting and the ending and uh, what is happening throughout your program then there should be a risk management where you should be able to uh, handle the risk which is coming in between in 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 terms of a failure or in terms of a feature a newly added feature can cost uh, can also cost uh, a, sec a safety and security issue then the quality assurance you should be assuring the quality of your product otherwise that can also cause a major damage to the entire product itself then the major stuff you should follow a standard or a compliance with which it will be easy for you to uh, uh, to make a safe and secure system. The standards and compliance are already there um, by major certification authorities. So it helps you to follow the process with which you will be able to produce a safe and secure and a, a mission critical systems. So let's see what are the roles actually uh, Greenwell software deals with, uh, with the software. Uh, tool. So we are mainly concentrating over here on the firmware. So uh, what are what are the roles of firmware in critical systems? So let's see. Now the most of the now most of the uh, environment what we see most of systems what we see right now the functionalities are most more pushed towards firmware. But that means more, most of the operations right now are handled by firmware instead of hardware. So what happens is increases the complexity and it can create a major bug or a problem. So you should be all you should be very much concentrated on uh, on very much follow the process on creating a firm, software or a firmware. Um, as an example, with my experience, I can tell you actually uh, with my previous engagements, I was working with a uh, fan controls. Maybe you might have you might have seen in your real life railway fans. So how, how many of you know that the railway fans has a uh, software inside? So the thing is a previous system, previous system, there was no software. It was a purely uh, induction motor fan. So it was, it was a simple electronic circuit will uh, drive the fan. So and less uh, dependency on software. But nowadays, if you go, if you are traveling and if you are able to travel in your in a train, Kindly notice that you have a fan which is uh, which is driven by software. So that is as a BLDC fans, which is called as brushless, which works on a opportunity, which works on a technology called brushless DC motors. So with this, with brushless DC motors, uh, for, to drive that motors, you need either need a FOC or a six steps computation. This is a um, software method with which you are be controlling. So the previous system doesn't have a bigger software to rely on, but now to work to work to rotate the fan itself you require a software and it is complex because it follows a particular algorithm now for uh, we will see some examples of crashes what happened in our in, in our history or in our in the past so we might we might have seen this Boeing 787 max problems uh, uh, with and which caused two major crashes uh, with the uh, major amount of losses, like you including human life. That is uh, the Lion Air crash and the uh, Ethiopian Air crash. So what was Boeing is such a uh, reputed company. So what happened to them? So the thing is, they introduced a new system. So why, why they introduced the system is 
that is itself is a bigger story, but I'll try to uh, brief it. So when uh, uh, to try to decrease, try to increase their uh, fuel efficiency, they made a certain amount of changes in their uh, flight design, in the, in the flight design itself. So with which, they, when, uh, when, the fly, when the flight is operating at full thrust, the nose seems to be, the nose of the flight seems to be climbing a bit higher. So to maneuver this problem, which, which, which actually costs a stop, so to maneuver this problem, they introduce a software which is called as MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. So with which they were trying to dip the nose a bit so that it can adjust and it will not relate it, it will not cause a stop. So for this, what they use, they are dependent on an angle of attack sensors. So this angle of attack sensors were giving them data. But what is the major issue? It was the issue, uh, the issue was the pilots were not informed or actually informed or they don't have an idea or not given enough training on the system to, on how to disable it, even though it is mentioned on their manuals. They were not given enough information on how to disable it. What happened with Lion Air and Ethiopian Air is Lion, it, the Iranus, Iranus data, which is caused by, which is, which is uh, actually uh, an output of AOF sensors, AOS sensors resulted in malfunctioning of MKS. That means the nose was dipping, it was dipping, which was, which, uh, which made the pilot to take the control, but they were not able to disable this MKS. So with Lion Air, they, uh, they were not able to disable this and they failed and it caused a death of 189 people. To be precise, it, it actually crashed into uh, Javan Sea. With Ethiopian Air, they were able to disable the MCAS at the end, but it was too late for them to take the control. Then also, it also cost life of around 160 people. So this is a major software issue. Now they have also, now even the Boeing has also accepted this and they have made enough changes and you can see in, the, uh, in their uh, web page, in their website for regarding this information. This is also an older story which, which is happening with a SAB aircraft, which is a military aircraft. So here they have been in the multiple accidents, around 10 accidents there will happen. But the major crashes, the, the two crashes, that is at nine, regarding 1989 and 1993 crashes. This occurred due to um, a flight control software issue. Okay, so, and this occurred at the place where there were a lot of people, the one during a public display and when there were something around thousand spectators uh, during a, some festival. Uh, so this was, but there was no fatalities, luckily. So. Um, but it's a major issue uh, regarding due to the software issues, we had a, such a problem. Now, what are the uh, challenges we are facing in a critical system? So we have to identify the waste case failures. We are only uh, not only have to identify, we have to uh, actually find a recovery and from recovery also for the uh, uh, failures. So we have to make a fail-safe systems. We have to make fail recovery, failure, failure recovery systems, and then defining software integrity levels. So according to the safety, according to the uh, integrity of the software, we have to make softwares in the, uh, at different levels, and all these levels should be isolated so that the soft, the level, the lower level systems should not interfere in the higher level systems, which can cause a issue. Uh, okay, and then you should have a predictability. That means the software should be predictable. It should be traceable. Then reliability. This it should be software should be written in a reliable way, and it should have robustness. Robustness and certification will also help you in creating a critical system. So now, an introduction to Greenwell software. So now we are going into the Greenwell software and we'll, uh, we will see how Greenwell software is helping us in creating a uh, critical system. So the history is they are founded in 1982, more than they are almost reaching 40 years now, 
only two years ago, in the 40 years of their experience in embedded industry. They have a worldwide presence with the help of the partners, of their partners. They headquartered in California, in Santa Barbara. And they are leaders for almost 30 years in embedded safety and security that you can see from uh, the next slides. And they have a diverse market presence from automotive to consumer. They are almost they are there in almost every market. So what are the tools we have with Green Earth? So we have development tools, which is used to develop the software. Uh, we have multi-ID, which is, the, which is the integrated development environment provided by uh, Green Earth. And we have for multi-ID for embedded Linux OS. We have ADA multi-ID for ADA language. And we have some optimized, we have optimizing compilers for all um, different architectures, which we will be discussing in the next, in the coming slides. And we have tools called as Time Machine Debugger, which allows you to debug in the reverse direction. And we have a static analyzer called Double Check Static Analyzer, which helps in static analysis of your code. Okay, then comes to the operating systems. We have Integrity Autos, which is one of the most reliable, safe and secure autos in the market. And we have one uh, version of the same autos, which is called as 178, which is certified for DO178. I'll not be talking about DO uh, Integrity 178 autos much because um, it's not, uh, we are not authorized for this particular variant. Then we have uh, an, a, a software virtual, a, a secure virtualization environment or a secure virtualization software auto is called as integrity multivisor, where you will be able to virtualize or you'll be able to run <coughs> multiple guest devices on integrity autos. Then we have a soft time, the, the integrity autos is a real, a hard real time autos. And, uh, we have a soft real-time auto, which is called as micro velocity. Uh, and we will not be discussing much about micro velocity also. So micro velocity also is scheduler based autos, which is um, majorly for a microcontroller uh, and smartphone microcontrollers. Or that and we uh, and we have processor probes, which is just called as super trace probes and green hills probe. Uh, we'll be discussing about these two groups in the coming slides. So multi, so it is a, as I told, it's an ID from Google software. Here it is, it is a sync, it is used for all architectures which are support for, uh, for uh, from Green Hills. And it supports multi-core debugging. It supports embedded Linux OS also. You have support for ADA, ADA language. Then uh, the host supported our Windows, Linux, and Solaris. And the target OSs supported our integrity, micro velocity, ZX. Okay. And embedded Linux, as I told. So, two variants in multi, which is standard and professional. So, I'll just have a brief introduction to the standard with and professional also. The standard, uh, what it has, the features uh, inside stand, uh, standard as Instruction set simulator, you will have an instruction set simulator, uh, depending upon the architecture. You have a source level debugger. You have an inbuilt mistrust feature checker, which is one of the major feature of uh, multi. Uh, it, uh, it supports 1998, 2004, and 2012. You have a runtime capability of runtime error checking, and you have feature of profile and coverage. Profile and coverage. This will be available in multi standard, which is the less, uh, which is the lesser variant compared to multi-professional. So when you go to multi-professional, other than all these features which I've mentioned in the standard, you have something called as time machine tool suit, which is used for reverse debugging that I will be explained how we can do it, which will, which will make you to find your errors in a much faster way. Then you have a static code analyzer, which is called as double check, with which, with which you can analyze your code before execution itself. And you have a feature called OS Hour Debugging with which you can, you will be able to visualize uh, different stages or different events or different objects of your operating system, which is supported by multi. So what are the licenses we have? We have 
network floating license, then and a, and a dongle license. And you can have a configuration of a yearly license that is annual license or a per, and a per, or a permanent license. So let's go through each features of multi. So with a source level debugger, you will be able to uh, view your code in assembly mode, mix it mode, and source mode. And you'll also be able to view the registers of your microcontroller, your connected microcontrollers, your memory views, then uh, there's and variable views, variable also local variables you can view and global variables you can view. Then you have a memory allocation. So your memory allocations can also be now let's go to runtime error checking. What is runtime error checking? So this is these are these are errors which come at, which comes up during execution cycle. Or and this can be predicted with the help of the feature called runtime error checking in multi. But you need to enable this in the build options to view this errors. So what are errors you can check? You can check assignment bounds, you can check uh, array bounds, case level bounds, divide by zero, nil pointer dereferences, and write to watch points. These are errors you can check with, with runtime error checking, but you need to enable this on the build options. So once you enable this build options, you need to also enable which error you need to check. So once that error comes up when during execution, it doesn't want, it warns and it stops also. It stops your execution. Not only once, it stops your execution. It, it gives you the error and stops your execution. And it it enables or it, it makes you, it makes the uh, software to, um, so, software developer to change it. Or address the issues. Okay. Now, the other feature which is called as inbuilt mistrustry checker, uh, which helps in uh, checking the mistrustry conformance rules. We, you don't have to, Depend on any other tools for doing this, you have an inbuilt Mishrasri checker with multi itself, and it supports Mishrasri 98, 2004, and 2012. Most probably in the future versions, um, 98 might not be supported, but the current versions, till 2019, we have support for all three variants. Now, the other feature profiler and coverage. So, what all you can do with profiler and coverage. So there are three, uh, almost five, sorry, there are almost five modes in which you can view the profile and coverage information. So it's called as sample data, with which um, what the tool does is it'll, uh, it'll randomly collect the, uh, randomly collect the, uh, sorry, randomly time the PC samples and uh, with which you'll be able to find out uh, which function or which particular process is taking more time? Okay, but this is an uh, uh, approximate data which doesn't have, uh, which have uh, doesn't have correct information. It is an approximate approximate data regarding time. So now the trace data. Here you need to collect. You need to have the trace information of your uh, of your microprocessor. The CPU logs. The CPU with the trace information, you uh, the same sample informations will be viewed with the trace data. But this will be much appropriate, or this will be much correct. Okay. Then we have, can can view the history data. That means what is your uh, your function exit and function entry data. Okay. So these all informations you can view with the history data. Then you have instrumentation instrumented coverage data, which is you'll be able to know what all the functions or processes are covered, which are not covered, how many dead codes are present in your system. And instrumented performance data. So with the performance data, you will be able to know which all, which all process or functions have been executed how many times. So with which you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to uh, increase the performance. Okay. So uh, this is all you can do with profile and coverage. Uh, what we can do, there's one more uh, tool which is called as uh, OS awareness tool, which is part of the provisional version, which helps you in feasible debugging and 
uh, in, in viewing the OS objects. So whenever you have an operating system running on your target, and uh, you have to visualize what is happening with your operating systems, operating system, how they are uh, creating the task, how it is operating. So you have some tools called as Event Analyzer, uh, OS Explorer, OS Object Viewer. So with Event Analyzer, you will have a view, a graphical representation uh, of, of your operating system, with which you will be able to know which task and executing at what time which task which, which task is spawned at what time and uh, what is your execution time uh, of one task uh, from start of task to the end of task okay and uh, all those details you'll be able to view in the event analysis and uh, in the noise explorer so when when your operating system is uh, running and when you are in a debugging mode so you will be able to <laughs> view the complete operating system uh, related information in the operating system explorer. But, but when you enable this, when you start, when you click on the op operating system explorer, it stops your execution. The multi stops the execution of your application. And it will show the complete list of tasks, objects, and uh, <clears throat> task objects, then all the other objects of your operating systems in the explorer and the object viewer will also help you uh, to view the objects of the os uh, the kernel objects of your os in the viewer now what all it supports it supports the integrity micro velocity and threadx operating system and uh, one more uh, operating system which is which are called as asec operating systems uh, which supports automotive industry so these operating systems uh, will have an RT file with which uh, OSIC, this is called as the RT files are called as OSIC runtime and interface. So these inter, uh, these RT files will enable you to debug or uh, to view, not debug, to view the uh, objects of the OSIC operating system. Now, here comes the compiler. Uh, we call it an optimizing compiler. And... Uh, Greenhill supports only 32-bit and 64-bit architectures. The Kao compiler supports only the, these two architectures. We don't have support for 16 and 8-bit. Then uh, we have, uh, these are supported architectures of uh, ARM, PowerPC, Intel, Goldfire 68K, MIPS, RH850, and Trico. So these are the architectures we support. And we saw the supported languages are C, C++, and NADA. So why we call as an optimizing compiler? So from the, the embassy, you might have heard about embassy. So embassy benchmark, it's an embassy, it's a benchmarking consortium. Consortium. So these consortiums are third party, which which uh, they are, they evaluate our tools and they share the benchmarking with respect to the COMAX or with a value called COMAX. So this COMAX <coughs> value should be higher. So you can always uh, check uh, in the embassy uh, website uh, about go or about our greenhouse uh, co marks which is always higher than any other tools so which shows that it can it, it produce a speed a faster and a, and a reduced size code compared to the other compilers which is almost lesser than 20 lesser than 20 percent and the reason uh, data regarding this information uh, is like we, with respect to Cortex R5 processor. So uh, uh, with the recent uh, evaluation, it has seen a performance of 1.01 uh, .01 embassy auto marks per megahertz. So which is higher compared to the previous uh, testing, previous benchmarking also. So now with this, what all we can, we can reduce the um, memory cost with, and we can also reduce, you don't require a, uh, always, you don't have to always go behind a high-end processor to uh, build your application. So uh, you can, uh, with our compiler, you can have a better performance on uh, on the same processor itself. So now, what are the certifications is available with multi-tooling? 
so as you see as you have as i uh, have told certification is a major part in the uh, critical systems once you have pre-certified tools this will help you uh, in in your time to market it will actually fasten your time to market and you also reduce the cost because you also know certification is something uh, always costly it's a process process is always costly so we have pre-certified versions of of multi which is uh, which is for industrial we have iec 61508 uh, which is and uh, for railways we have uh, en 50128 then automotive we have uh, one ISO 26262. Uh, so, and we have certificates from TUV, Exida, TUV and Exida, and uh, it satisfies uh, both SIL and ASIL so levels of certification, and it supports both set of, means it supports many target processes. So one of the benefits we have, as I told you, have a low cost and time to certification, reduce uh, time to market, then um, certification maintenance, you can uh, you have reduced impact on certification maintenance after the release. Then uh, you can, you have an application development support because it supports SIL, SIL levels. It satisfies SIL levels, so it will always enable you in development, in supporting, in uh, enabling SIL. So what are the third party integrations supported in multi -chip? So you have an, uh, we have tools called Parasoft, which can be integrated. It is a, a software testing tool. You have, you can integrate Eclipse, you can integrate Rhapsody. You can, uh, editors like Emacs, VI, these can be integrated. You have um, um, version control tools like Subversion, Clearcase, uh, CVS, SoSafe, and you can also integrate DOFs and Staps compilers. That's what Staps are. So now, as I told, the, this is one of the professional feature, uh, and uh, it's a tool suit developed by Multi, by, by Greenhills, uh, which is called as Time, Time Machine Debugging Suit, and it's integrated with Multi, and it is available with professional license. So how it helps? So actually, to work with my Time Machine, you require trace. So you should have a control controller, or you should have a processor, uh, which is capable of giving you a trace. It should, it should have a trace port. Trace is nothing but uh, CPU logs. And you should have a debugger, which is capable of storing the trace. Okay, so with with this trace, what all you can do? So with, with this trace in time machine, you can actually go, you can go back in time. That means you can, you can use this for reverse debugging. So when once you have reach uh, debugging, which you have stopped in the debugging process, and once you are halted in the debugging process, and if you want to go back and see uh, where I stepped over, maybe I maybe you have stepped over a particular function. So you can always single step in a backward direction and uh, and go to the step over function, go inside and see what is happening inside the function or inside the process. So the, what it helps, it helps when making your debugging faster because you don't have to restart your uh, system again to, de to go into a particular function. You can always go back with the help of trace. So uh, again, it will make your uh, debugging faster. Then it makes your software, software also run faster. How come? By making your debugging and making and uh, with the help of the co coverage tools what Time Machine has. So we will show you how we can do, uh, we'll actually, I'll, uh, we'll have a discussion on how we can do coverage with time machine. So it accelerates debugging, it's fixed the bugs faster, then it helps in testing also. So we have a tool with which is integrated, which is linked with time machine, which is called as path analyzer. So path analyzer, what it does, it does, it has a uh, pictorial or it has a graphical view of the trace uh, information is what you have collected. So it, uh, it provides a graphical view of the recorded trace. So it displays 
relationships between your functions or your call functions or your process. It shows a call stack, so you can see your call stack depth with the help of this uh, GUI. And it also helps in uh, track, keep the tracking of how many times a particular function has been executed. And even you can see the execution time of every function by using, uh, you have rulers and all those stuff with which you can just simply measure uh, of what, is, uh, what is the time of a particular function. So you, as I told before, you have something called as trace data profiler. So the previous profiler, which we are discussing in multi users instrumented approach for most of their process. That means they will be injecting some kind of code to retrieve some information, which makes it slower. Also, it makes uh, the information what we gather to be a, a, more, a bit inaccurate. Okay, so with the, with the help of time machine, with the help of trace what we have recovered, what we have recorded, but, and with the same profiler, which is in the multi, we can have a non-instrumented approach. So with this non-instrumented approach, you will have much accurate or much precise, to be alien, it's not accurate, to be pre precise. Precise reports, precise information of your time, uh, uh, how, much, uh, how much time each function is taken, or you have to also have a coverage related information of how many, how many times each, uh, 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 you have coverage information of uh, how many, uh, how many um, functions are actually covered, on which are rather dead code present. So this helps in testing uh, with the help of time machine. So now what we have is a double check static analyzer. So this helps this tool, which is also part of the professional version of Multi, uh, is having a static analysis tool. This is a static analysis tool. So it is built into Greenhouse compiler, and it helps you in finding bugs during build time or before execution time, before executing the program itself. So, so when, once during the build time also, you, you'll be able to find what all the errors this errors or bugs this code has okay so for for enabling this also you need to uh, enable it in the build options so with the help of uh, with the by enabling it in the build options you'll be able to check this with the help of the tool so what it does it also it issues a warning like how the runtime errors it issues a warning and also errors and it also stops the execution if it's not, it doesn't stop because it's not executing. So it doesn't stop an execution. Sorry for that. So it it's build time. It shows what is the what are the errors and warnings, and you can edit it from uh, from the from the user interface itself, from the editor window itself, and it will be displayed in line. And one more thing is it will generate reports. So you can you will have a report which can be shared internally, which can be monitored and uh, uh, you can get information from that report. So what are the flaws it can detect and double check? So you can well, almost every, almost all uh, runtime errors you can check with double check. Uh, and also like your null point and buffer flows, um, read and write um, to, means uh, writing to read only memory. And, Resource leaks, these all things you can. Now, now let's um, let's come to uh, let's discuss about operating systems. So the we are going to discuss about integrity operating systems over here. So integrity is a flagship product of Greenhouse. The this operating system is a, based on a priority based preemptive microkernel. Is one of the most reliable, safe, and secure embedded systems available. So, what all uh, it has? It has like for integrity to work, you should have an MMU. So, without MMU, you cannot use integrity. Autos. 
So integrity is reliant on uh, memory, on memory processor. So your processor should have memory. And uh, it has an advanced middleware supports like advanced file systems, IPv4, IPv4, USB, uh, and OpenGL. And it's supported by POSIX also. Multi-core architecture supported. And these are the processors supported. PPC, Intel, Qualifier, and MIPS. And let's see what are the certifications it allows. So I don't want to, uh, we don't want to discuss more about DO 178. Uh, it, it has DO 178, but it is a different variant. It is called as Integrity 178 autos. Okay. And the rest four on the downside, like FDA, <coughs> Uh, class two and class three for medical devices. We have for industrial railway EN EN five zero one two eight and six one five zero eight and two six two six two four automotive. These are the certificate support. Now going to the architecture, how it will help in creating a critical system. So let's see how how the architecture is in integrity. So in integrity, every basis, every application runs on a uh, separate basis. Separate VAS, which is called as virtual address spaces. The virtual address spaces doesn't mean that you have you are addressing uh, to a virtual memory or uh, you are, you have um, you, you can go beyond your uh, memory limits. No, so this is the the address only is virtual, but it has been uh, actually linked to a <coughs> physical memory itself. The kernel also has a is a is a VAS. So it's isolated from and it's isolated from other applications. There's no central storage of memory. That means all the memory is a hard currency. You have to uh, inform integrity. You have to inform uh, much before uh, the starting itself. So initially itself, you have you should have data of how much memory my VAS can use. So you may ask how I can uh, I can use dynamic memory allocation. So for dynamic memory allocations, you have heaps heaps in every VAS. Uh, this is also you have to predefine it. So it will, it will grow according to your memory allocation, but to the limit of your VAS's memory. And it's a space and time partition autos. And how do you communicate? As, as it is isolated from each other, how do you communicate? We communicate each other with kernel with uh, kernel objects. The kernel objects, nine kernel objects defined in integrity with which we'll be able to communicate with each other. So how it helps in in uh, making a critical system. So it helps in uh, guaranteeing system resources. That means reliability. So it ensures CPU time. It ensures memory resources. That means to prevent a denial attack, integrity assigns fixed budget of time, CPU time, and memory to every process. That means nobody, no process can execute beyond its permitted limit. Now, the guaranteed second one, safety and security by providing guaranteed separate, separation. The system, the, as I told, system, systems are divided in different, into separate virtual address spaces. So each address spaces have a quota of memory. So nobody can access beyond this quota of memory. So if you try to access beyond the quota of memory, it will be throwing you errors. So now, the, Third one, it's a hard real-time autos. How it will achieve a hard real-time performance? So it is achieving hard real-time performance with the help of MMU. So, so to isolate and protect a system, it uses MMU. And it doesn't uh, compromise real-time performance for security. So it never compromise uh, real-time performance for security and protection. So the uh, all the kernel services are carefully optimized so that we can achieve this. And uh, you have multiple levels of priority with which you will be able to schedule it uh, with the help of the scheduler. Then uh, it, it it always services the highest priority interrupt with a minimum latency. So you can see a, bin, uh, in a small example with respect to Freescale P2020 architecture. Um, we have from a task one to task two, um, uh, in between we have an interrupt with which uh, it processes the uh, ISR, I mean, it jumps to ISR with, uh, in, in nanoseconds. So it, it guarantees minimum latency. And the kernel services interrupts are never blocked to achieve such, uh, such minimum latency. So 
How next one uh, regarding the inter-process communication. So uh, as I told with all and with, with the nine kernel objects, we will be able to communicate with each other in security. So how we will come in, we can use message queues, we can use semaphores, you can use connection managers defined uh, in integrity to communicate with each task or each address space. Then the, how you uh, then we have something called a secure IO devices. So this is the IO devices with which we can reduce the errors caused by device drivers. You know, device drivers are most susceptible to um, crashes and all those systems problems. So how it helps? So it helps by creating a virtual address space for a device driver, like a virtual device driver. And with the help of the IO device kernel object, we can communicate with the hardware. We'll get access to the hardware and and, yeah, and minimal information from the hardware can be shared to the virtual address space. Virtual address space where the virtual driver task is there. So the, with the help of that uh, IO device, we'll be able to reduce the complications or risks of the device driver. Now the failures, how you'll handle the failure. So we have an exception, we have an exception handle handling with multi-level exception, with multi-level. So let's see, there's three address spaces here. We have an address space A, address space B, and address space C. C. So in an address space A, a D task even causes an exception. So these exceptions can, can be handled in the task level itself. It can be handled in the task level when it is occurred, or it can, if you don't have a task level handler, you can handle in the address space handler, which is by default. Actually, an address space handler will be there by default. Even if you want to have a task level handler, you need to create it, but address space handler need not be, it will be available by default. And you have a system level monitor also, so you can create a health monitor address space with a system level handler where you can handle this exception. So you can exception and handle exception in all three levels. Now the secure virtualization, what we talked about, that is uh, called as integrity multivisor, but as a type two um, a hypervisor where uh, an integrity, uh, the virtualization happen, happens over integrity autos. So you can have a um, more guest operating systems alongside, along with your integrity autos and you can handle your mission critical applications and integrity autos. So what all features it has? It, has, it can, we can share the devices and uh, peripherals. We can share the, uh, uh, we can we can communicate with the inter-process communications. Uh, hardware virtualization, if it is supported, then it adds on uh, the virtualization capacity. Capacity, and uh, uh, it has multi-core supports, and we can configure also. So the architecture supported are NXP, IMX, uh, S32, then uh, Core IQ, NSS Arcar, Snapdragon, uh, Intel, and AMD. These all are uh, architectures are supported. Now, what we have on the hardware probes, we have two major uh, hardware probes, which is called as uh, Green Hills probe V4, which is the latest one. We, we, we had a V3 probe before uh, in 2019. Now we have v, v, V4 probe, which is uh, in the latest release. So this, in the V3 probe, we didn't have a trace. Uh, the probe was not trace capable. So here in V4, what is the major changes? We have 4 GB high-speed trace memory, and uh, it is capable of both parallel and serial, uh, acquiring parallel and serial trace. <clears throat> and uh, it, can, it, is, it is having one of the fastest download speeds. And uh, it has, as I told, this is having a tight integration with time machine debugging, so that with, with Green Hills, with this tool, we can you will be able to use time machine in a much in a much better way, and you should have actually V4 or uh, Green Hill Scope to use Time Machine. So you have an LCD here also here to which indicates the uh, settings and uh, diagnostics provided by the uh, tool by, by the V4 Pro. The one of the major features you can power the host. We can power the target with the help of USB. So you have a USB host and power ports. Uh, the power port, power port you'll be able to actually uh, power the target, uh, which is capable of driving lower current. That may be, may be up to 2.5 amps. Or, well, uh, that is the ampere rating uh, the port should have. And you have an Ethernet switch and port. That means you know, this can act as an Ethernet switch also. 
no, this, the the SCPV3, which is called as uh, super trace probe, which we had previously also. And this this is this is uh, used for uh, collecting higher amount of trace. You have a, a capability of 4 GB and 16 GB also. And this with the help of time machine, this also with the help of time machine, it will help you in debugging the debugging your trace enabled target. So with what is the main uh, uh, STP has much more support on the target uh, on the processor side compared to G4. V4 is still uh, getting integrated uh, to have more supports. Now, what are the summary we have for you? As with the pre-certified solutions uh, uh, from Green Hills, you can reduce your uh, time to market and, it, and it's actually uh, and time to certification it actually reduces the cost also. Then with a compiler, with the optimizing compiler and double check static and ISL, again, it enables you to create a reliable software. And the multi ID with the time machine will be ena will enables you to find the errors faster and fix faster. Then, as I told before, integrity as uh, per design itself, it's a most reliable, safe, and secure autos. It's, uh, it's guaranteed resource availability, separation, uh, real time responses, all enables you to build a um, better critical system. So these are some of the customer quotes uh, we have from our customers. Uh, so, in our train control system management uh, management system from Bombardier, they are using our integrity autos, uh, and they have uh, relied on our partitions to create a safety critical functions okay. uh, uh, partitions. Then also locking, mudding, boring, otters. These all are other customers. Customers who are given good uh, information or good responses, quotes on our tools. Now, there are some customer success stories for you. Uh, the Lockheed Martin F-16 was using our integrity autos um, in the color display processor uh, uh, in the F-16s. And uh, in, this is an aerospace a domain example where Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency as uh, using our multi, uh, multi tool and uh, compiler in the MIPS architecture uh, to, uh, to uh, to create a launch vehicle control system, maintenance and control system. And in the automotive, we are uh, Toyota is using our multi ID and compiler for V850 and V850 architecture uh, for powertrain, uh, drivetrain, power steering. And then, uh, as, I, as the code says, the, the Bombardier also using uh, and multi environment for. In, for pain management systems. So I believe now I can address your questions. Praveen, uh, Praveen my colleague uh, will read out. I for you. Uh, yes. Uh, I meant to receive, receive the question. Okay, there is one question from Iman Shu. Okay. His question goes Using multi ID and its features in mm -hmm. on OS environment. Okay. Question is incomplete. That's all is his question. In non OS environment? That's all yes, but using multi IDE and its feature in okay. non OS environment. Okay. In a non OS, I, I, you might have asked, you might, the question is, might be on the critical system which doesn't use on, on OS. Okay. So on the non OS environment, also, you can make use of a time machine. Uh, you can use a double check static analyzer and uh, uh, also our runtime. Uh, Runtime debugging uh, also to uh, and the certifications from the multi uh, for the multi and tool chain, uh, multi and compiler tool chains for creating your uh, critical systems. All right. So, yeah, that's the only question um, I had here. Hmm. So, request that in these two, please ask if you have any questions. Okay, there's another question, Mr. Pankaj. His question goes like this. What all features are supported by multi IDE for embedded Linux debugging? Okay. Uh, this, uh, I, I think I need to get back to you on this. Uh, it's uh, like on the, on the embedded Linux, uh, as far as I know, uh, it supports on the 
uh, OS level debugging, that is OS awareness, uh, like uh, OSA uh, object, uh, so OSA object viewer and OSA explorer is supported. Even, even, even event analyzer is also supported, I believe. So I will get you more information on this. So uh, Praveen, I need, uh, uh, I need his contact. Sure, I'll definitely share that. Uh, Mr. Pankaj, get back to you with the information that you have asked for. And Mr. Pankaj is also requesting for the data sheets. Uh, we'll definitely send it over to you on an email. Thank you. Um, as of now, uh, that's all the question that we have. We we'll leave for other. Okay, there is a question from Rohit Kapoor. Okay. This question goes, can we use these tools for testing of applications other than microprocessor? No, it is. Uh... It is intended for microcontrollers and microprocessors. We have uh, <clears throat> we have uh, support for microcontroller and microprocessor. Okay. Hello, Praveen. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, Praveen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srijat. Okay, fine. Srijat, are you connected now? Yeah, I'm connected. Right. Uh, Srijat, there is one question if you would like to answer this. Okay. Mention Tell while me. addressing integrity or TOS hmm. that the interrupts are never masked in the kernel. Is it absolute? Okay, so here the kernel services, uh, inside the kernel services, uh, the interrupts are never masked because it, it, it increases the, uh, uh, so in the it increases the processing of the IS one in a much faster method, faster one, faster way. Okay, but when you are creating an application and if you have a driver related, uh, uh, interrupts you can always mask and unmask uh, that depends on your application but on the kernel side they are not masking any interrupts uh, to increase the latency increase, uh, to decrease the latency sir okay all right uh, well, the last question goes like this can i integrate open source testing and version control tools with multi ide yes version control tools yes Open source testing. Uh, which tools you are using? That I need to. Uh, that I. That I need information. Uh, okay. Version controls like. Uh, uh, Mr. Have, uh, I. I provided a list of yeah. version control tools. Okay. Uh, in my in my presentation, those tools are supported right now. Okay. All right. So I think it's time. Uh, we have we have time. The questions uh, that is there, yeah. Praveen, uh, the last question, yes, uh, uh, we need the uh, data much precisely, like which in which tools uh, they are using. We can always okay. uh, get back to them on this. All right. So, uh, Mr. Manpreet, if you can give us some more information on the sort of tools that you use, it'd be great. It will help us to answer your question. Yeah. So, I think we have answered most of the questions uh, that came up. So I'll keep this line open for another couple of minutes. So people can uh, use the chat box to send us the questions. We would, we, would get, we would get back to you with the answers on your email. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srijat. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.